Yeah. 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 Yeah.
and we ended up there, which told us there was a horizontal shift to the left, 4.5, and a vertical shift down, 5.2. So the answer is asking us for the zeros. the zeros. Solutions to your function are the zeros. Yeah. Wasn't, isn't this where you split it into two equations? So we can split in two equations because we are talking about the zero product property, which the zero product property is saying, if this equals zero, then what do I need to do over here to make that equal zero, what does x have to be? Now we could plug this into our um, calculator and do this, or we could plug it into Desmos and do this. What did we do yesterday? Did we get all the way to find the zeros yesterday? Yeah. So what did we do then? We did, so then we, um, we did radical 5.5. Yeah, if we were actually back up here. So we had, um, do a little separation here. We had x plus 4.5 squared equal to, was that negative? Positive. 5.25. This is where we're still just doing the algebra. What did we do first? And then we did negative, or then it equaled, or. What we do on both sides because. Oh, 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 sorry. I thought, so then we got it. Because I have a square that I need to get rid of, I take the square root. That gives me x plus 4.5 equals. Now this is where people start to goof up. If you, if you think you only have one solution, go back and check your square root. What about a square root? Its answers are positive and or negative. And is a little weird, but we can say positive or negative. And yesterday we kind of broke it and looked at both solutions. So you can, if you don't like this. Excuse this interruption. Could I have Josh Malik to the office? Josh? You could just put the negative on one side. It's not, no, it's not five. It's 2.25. Sorry, yeah. 2.25. So put positive. 2.9. Two nine. Subtract the 4.5 from either of those. And we got our solutions, which you should still have from yesterday. You probably need to go back and look at the negative of the square root. So we'll take a couple of those homework questions. We're just going to finish 12.6 today. We're not moving forward. We're going to finish 12.6 and look at homework questions and talk about high school. Your guys' schedule. Oh, yeah. Can I no. I Dude, you should have asked for those right when you walked in. Also, being on time, like if you knew that you had missed class yesterday and you would need to catch up, probably spending your time to buy a candy bar before class was not the most effective use of your time. So let's try problem three, where we need to find the vertex. Now, in either of these, hopefully you see from this got it, we can do anything. We could find the zeros or find the vertex, Finding the vertex is honestly easier than finding the zeros, because when we get to this point, we know the vertex. <clears throat> so, we first ask ourselves, is x squared plus 6x plus 8 a perfect square trinomial? It is not. So, first thing I would do to start working this towards using completing the square. We, uh, I forget if this one needs... You may be able to do this without a calculator. The only thing that gets funky is square rooting, and we won't need to square root here. So while I appreciate you passing out calculators, Carmen, I don't think we need those here. So I get rid of that positive 8 from both sides and make this negative 8. To make this a perfect square trinomial, I think about what is half of your b value, and then I would square that. So I need to add 9, and I have to do it on both sides. Any questions?
for what I did there. Wait, take, so to determine your C, take B divided by 2 and square it. So we're assuming Y is 0? Or? Yeah, because we're to B quadratic, we set it equal to 0. If you solve, like if you solve for the zeros, we're not actually going to solve for the zeros. We're going to look at our function and be able to tell where the vertex is just by the function. We could then solve it and find the zeros. First thing we can find is the, the vertex, though. So now we can rewrite my left side as the perfect square. So that's going to be x plus that half of b value that you had gotten, then squared. And that equals 1, which when rewritten in quadratic form, we just need to make this equal 0. So I'm going to continue downward even though we're not on the got it. This would just become x plus 3 squared minus 1 equals 0. Any questions on the algebra up to this point? So then... Anything inside the parentheses is horizontal, but it's counterintuitive. So if it says plus 3, we actually went left 3. And anything outside the parentheses does what you think it will. So that goes down 1. And our vertex here ends up being... Well, the parent function vertex is 0, 0, so if that was the shift to my parabola, questions on problem 3. Try the got it. I will meander the room. I'm going to leave this up here while you guys try the got it. So if you are hitting any struggles, I would like to help. You can move on to problem four if you get done with that. Yeah. <clears throat> because that would be the solution there for what makes that true. Because that's the shift that's happening. So if we go back up to this as our parabola. It has already evaluated the things that have been done. So when we start with the parent function, we start with x squared. So what we've really done, our parent function is this with zeros. Plus zero, plus zero. That's our parent function. It has shifted nowhere horizontally, nowhere vertically. Um, and I have a little presentation I might show you guys on Monday about the shifts of the parabola and why, like really why this happens. But if we looked only at horizontal shifts, if we put a plus 2 here, then in order to get this back to equaling 0, this would need to be negative 2. So that tells me that when x is negative 2, y is 0. So that was just a horizontal shift to make my vertex of my parabola now, sorry, it's a poor looking parabola, just shifted left a little bit. Then, if I want to do anything else to this, I wish you would have attached things. We know that in any function, linear or otherwise, if I add or subtract something on the outside, it will move me up or down just because the y equals, if this part is 0, what is y? Well, then y would be positive 3. So when that value, not when x is 0, but when this is 0, the y is 3. So that's why this tells me horizontal, that tells me vertical. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Considering which 
Let's go together. You know we didn't get it right, so. if I got it right well, you don't know that yet. So we start by really setting this equal to zero. You don't need to put the y equals, but I like to start by saying like either f of x or y equals, like this is the function we're dealing with. Here's the function. When it equals zero, that's quadratic and that would solve out for the solutions. We know it's not perfect square. So first thing you guys did since you got it wrong, you're gonna help me well, since you got it wrong. Probably. What'd you do first? Subtracted 10 from both sides, and you made this x squared plus 4x right now equals negative 10. This is still your function. But right now what it's saying is if I plug in some x values here, we're going to be at the y value of negative 10. So you can imagine like some line going across negative 10. This would solve right now for what are your x values at negative 10, as opposed to solving quadratic. Well, if you use calculator to check it, whatever. Yeah, that's my point. Yeah, yeah, check it. So then, to make this perfect square, we're saying, what could x add or subtract with that when I have x plus or minus, and this is where people have struggled in the past, which is why we've gone so slow in chapter 12, that this value when outer and inner, so essentially when that value doubled, will equal your b. So that's why we do half of b, because 2x and 2x will get me 4x. So this becomes just plus 2, because the negative won't work. I hate how big my eraser is. So we determine that it's plus 2 plus two, they have to be the same since it's perfect square trinomial as opposed to difference of squares. And then wouldn't you do the whole thingy to the 10? So what do we add is what we have to figure out. Yeah. Can you say divide by the... B divided by two. Yeah, whatever it is, squared. Oh, so our B divided by two look, tells us I, this value. That's what I was confused about. Is B divided yeah. by two. So is that the B value? Got it. That's our b divided by 2. So if you want a kind of like shortcut cheat, whatever you want to remember, when we're making perfect square trinomials, we're going to have x plus or minus, depending on the sign of it, b divided by 2. That's where we get our value in the binomial. Our c value, like we had up there, is that b divided by 2 squared. So that comes out to be... Because we don't know what the sign will be until we're specific to. So this is not or. That's dependent on your situation. So if you want, you could just write plus because whatever the value is, it will then make it happen. But I'm just saying that won't always be addition. Sometimes it's subtraction. If your b value was negative, this becomes negative. But still, your C will end up positive you're because you're squaring, and it, whether you're squaring a negative or a positive, you're getting a positive. Okay. Questions? Just to this point. Th is this what you had? Oh, uh, no, but now that we've seen like, that, now yeah. that we know it. Okay. So then, we, oh, we are doing this problem. I don't know why I crossed this out, because I'm writing over top of it, but this is the problem that we're doing. Yeah, well, a lot of times, especially in other math classes, I write over top of it, and kids will keep going if they don't realize, like, hey, no, move your, you guys are smarter than me. So, we now have to evaluate this. We already know that my left side is this x plus 2 squared. So then all I have to do is figure out the right side is now negative 6. So if I rewrite this in quadratic, it would be x plus 2 squared plus 6 equals 0. That makes my vertex the 
opposite of what's in the parentheses, negative 2, and exactly what is outside the parentheses. Well, we close. We close. What do you have? We yeah. have x plus 4 squared plus 6. So what was your coordinate? Oh, yeah. you, mean, oh you left that as 4 yeah, that was, instead of cutting it yeah, in half. I don't even know how you got the whole coordinate behavior. Coordinate behavior? Yeah. So, <laughs> do you now understand how I got the vertex? Yes. The coordinate The coordinate majigger. Wait, wait, one minute. Mm -hmm. Brian's actually good at this. Brian's really good at this. We were well, actually he, to, like, explain no, but yeah, he, he talked to me after it. class um, yesterday about honors he type likes stuff. This stuff. He does, and that's the funny thing is he, like I now like I was talking to him about the fact that like cause he asked me should I take honors. I was like, well, that depends. What kind of attitude are you going to have? And we're going to have this conversation, but, you know, especially, and Brian likes to kind of make it a joke, but when you decide to turn your brain on and decide that you're going to work through this until you find, like, the, the result or until you need to go ask for help, or, like, that's totally different than when Brian's in his eighth grade and like, well, how much do I have to do? How little can I get away with? How, like, that's kind of that whole, like, maturity piece of when you realize, like, yeah, this is going to be beneficial. It is tough, but I should still invest my time and my effort in it. I think he's getting to that point where, like, now that he gets this, and I'm using he as kind of a general, we're not really just talking about Brian, um, it starts to kind of come together, and when the pieces fit, it's easier to put time and effort in because the pieces kind of fit together. I mean, if you were trying, let's make an analogy, if you were trying to solve a puzzle where you just had to mash pieces together and it doesn't come out to look nice, you just end up frustrated and you give up. If over time, when you get the pieces to actually fit together, it looks real nice and what you're supposed to have, then you get happy and you're like, oh, that time was worth something. So what I'm hoping that you see is that once we get through these, that time is worth something. <clears throat> so let's do our final couple problems here. And then we have a little bit to talk about questions and or high school. <clears throat> you're playing a flower bed consisting of three square plots surrounded by a one foot border. So our squares are x by x. We've got three of them. Total area of the border. Ooh, the total area of the border is 100 feet squared. What is the side length x? Total area of the garden and the border. Hmm? Oh, good. Thank you. This was about to be a really weird problem. It would have been kind of fun to solve, but we would have had to do a lot. So, to find the area of the original, figure out what is your total length, what is your total width. So take a second, try to start setting this up, because this is our practical application. My wife actually just had to do stuff like this because they got a grant from Scott's, like the outdoor company, from their school for like X amount of soil and at like certain amounts of things. So they had to do the math to figure out, well, how big of gardens can we make with that much soil coming? If you make it way too big and you only end up with this much soil, you're not going to grow anything. You need your soil to be a certain depth, et cetera, et cetera. So luckily, this is on the area and not all the way to volume. How do we know the, like, the, the height? Square. So this is x, 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 oh, and x. Oh, there I are got three got square got plots. I didn't, I just can't see. I don't know. It's on, it's on your notes, baby. The X likes to blend into the Yeah, these X's. Yeah, So my entire actual length here would be what? The entire actual length. So uh, would that be 3X three three plus 2? Yep, because there's a 1 on each side. And here, we just have X plus 2. Oh, the square. So if I set this up, interesting. So 
trying to identify mistakes that I want you to avoid. A mistake that I've seen previously is people start working too quickly and they say, oh, my solutions are negative two and negative two thirds and neither of those make sense. Well, why can't we do that right now? Yeah, we're not quadratic. We can solve quadratics. We are equal to 100 right now, so we're not ready to solve. So we need to evaluate and prep before I'm anywhere close to ready to solve. So I can foil out my left hand side. What do we get? 3x squared plus 8x. So then if I make that quadratic, I get 3x squared plus 8x. Mm. Oh, minus 96 equals 0 because we subtracted 100 and subtracted 100. <clears throat> so we have a 3x that limits our options. Completing the square. Yeah. yeah. And A is not one. Hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, that's in the homework. That was in the geometry. So if we started solving it not doing completing the square, I love how you like say things before I'm like even there. We would set up something like this. But we need to use completing the square where this coefficient value and this coefficient value are the same thing and they're going to multiply by each other to make 3x squared. So how can I figure out what that coefficient is or what it would be? We're, we still have some manipulation to do up here. I'm just talking about the when a doesn't equal 1. Well, when something is going to end up multiplying by itself, 3x well, squared. I divided it by like Not do that because these have to be the same. If it's going to be completing the square, these binomials are going to be identical. So we're going to have the no, no, same she co. She, she took out the three. She divided everything by three. Oh, you divided all of this by three. Yeah. Okay. So that's one option. We can just factor out the three to begin with. Even. Ooh. That's another option where I could just say that we've got some stuff to do up here. So don't think that we're going to like be able to nicely work with that. But we could just say radical 3 times x. Make sure the x is not in the radical. And radical 3 times x. Those will then, when multiplied by each other, will make the 3. So let's keep playing. If we don't factor out the 3, because then I make a equal 1, and that's not exactly what we're trying to solve. So we could. But then I have like 8 thirds, and I have to cut 8 thirds in half, and then be 8 sixths, then like... We get, well, actually, that wouldn't be too bad to work with, but we get kind of some messy values. If I was going to approach this with completing the square, though, <clears throat> the rules have changed. Because now my B term is going to be a derivative or like a solution when I've done outer and inner involving that radical 3x. So how would we compensate that we're going to be multiplying by a radical 3x? Or uh, really, the radical 3 is what we care about. Megan? Well, I have another question. Okay. okay. So is it possible okay, this is my question. to subtract 4 from, when, like we're going down, to subtract 4 from the 100 to get it not in quadratic and then divide each side by 3 and then we add into the um, so you're saying if we did 3x squared plus 8x equal, or equals positive 96, and then you want to... You still will get 8 thirds x, which I mean is okay, but you'd have to divide everything by 3. Calvin? 
So let's go ahead and put this in perfect square form. If we can. Mm, crap. Again, how am I going to decide what this C needs to be? Sorry, so you're saying the B would need to be. Yeah, the one down there. It has to be 4 by bar root 2. Because you have to be capture the B value, because there's two of them being added. But then you would have to divide by root 3 because it's getting multiplied times root 3. Mr. I have a quick question. Yeah. What are we trying to even find here? I know we're trying to find x. We're trying to find the practical solution of x. The practical solution of x. So the size that we can make the garden with the given constraints. Alright. So the constraint is these plots have to be x squared. Yeah. The border has to be one foot. Yes. The whole space has to be 100 square feet. Alright. So what's x? So the question is what is x? How big can I make the garden? Or how big does the garden have to be? Ethan? Um, I have a question. Um, could you, to find the C value, could you go back and subtract the 4 from the 100? Okay, so we did that here. Yeah, and then, and then take your 8x and, and then find your C value, <coughs> which is 16. So... But 16, the problem with that is going to be, how do I, like, is that the perfect square when we're not going to have just x at the beginning? Because what we're seeing is this coefficient to my x value, right now we are hypothesizing, is radical 3 times x plus something squared. It would yeah. be sure. Well, I mean, you said 4 over radical 3. Yeah, so I, I already have that up there. I was trying to say why you couldn't just say it's 16. So hang on. But, wait. If 4 over radical 3 is squared, do you make it again? Well, 4 over radical 3, is kind of writing all over the place, and I apologize for that. <laughs> but 4 times radical 3 squared is going to be just times itself again, which is going to go straight across the top, straight across the bottom. So my C value, can you go make the connection? So Ethan had told us 16. Well, I have 16, but it's being divided by 3. Where'd this 3 come from? Mm, the coefficient to your x squared. So, when A is not equal to zero, we can find C. Find somewhere on your paper or post it or something. Hmm? Or, yeah, when A is not equal to one. Thank you. We can find C still by doing half of B, but then... We square it still, and we ended up after we squared our half of b. Come. Formula. We're slowly building the quadratic formula. Oh, but it's like that when you don't have the coefficient is divided by one. It's just the same. Oh, that makes sense. When the coefficient is 1, this doesn't do anything. It is visible. So I would somewhere on your paper make sure that we have C for these difficult situations will be half the B squared, but then over your A value. We're going to do a couple more. So we're still not done with this. I just need to capture and get some things off the screen. It's taken a long why well, this is really bad. I apologize for this. I just kind of wrote everywhere. So we still never actually put it into perfect square form because we were trying to figure out what the C needed to be. So we've now determined that C, 
C is your B divided by 2 squared all over A, which ended up being 16 over 3, 16 thirds, which we could make 5 and a third, but that would just be bad, so we might as well leave it at 16 thirds. So when we go back to this step, 3x squared plus 8x, We want to remove the constant that we have so that we can get whatever constant that we want. So my 96 would come over here, actually just like we had down here. And then I have to put the value for C that I found added to both sides. This left side, we already talked about. You guys, I understand this is super dense. The majority of times we will have a coefficient of A that is 1. There's four questions in a homework. <clears throat> I, we're going to go over those together. Like, I was planning that we'd have a quiz tomorrow, but I don't know that we actually so wait, this, made us do more of we, this. So again, I know we're trying to find No, X. so this chapter actually has 11 parts in it because quadratics are really dense. Oh, 11? We, that's why we're going slow. We're going slow because quadratics are really dense. I'd rather spend the extra time on this because hopefully the air test is the same as what it has been and the feedback that I've gotten, but apparently quadratics, like understanding all this stuff is fairly important. So I wanted to make sure we spent longer for the conceptual and not just the rote memorization of processes and formulas. So this, I know this doesn't quite make sense because it's the first one that we're going through. The more we do, the better it'll get. But this is all equal to, I'll throw like five and a third, so that'd be uh, 101 and a third. Right? Yes? I think so. Think? Yeah. Wait. We exactly. added 16 thirds to 96. Oh, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah? Would you square that? Oh, sorry, yes. This should have a square, because we're perfect square form now. Just, just stay with me right now. I have an answer sitting on here, and if it's right, I'm going to go off. But I don't think it is. Hang on to it. Just okay. let's see if it works out. So, Carmen, we'll have that high school conversation tomorrow. We'll we'll get to it. We just are running out of time today. This is what the answer is. Then you can wait. No, don't yell at him. Just you did on your calculator. So you can all do it on your calculator. Oh, got you. No, that is not. Well, we're, 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 we're you're supposed to use logic. What? This isn't logic. This is ridiculous. Why did you move it? This is 15 minutes for one problem. Yeah, why is logic you put it in your bathroom? Yeah. Why are you doing it? Everyone was talking, so I'm just doing my own thing. If you were asked to find the vertex, I know we're not here. If you were asked to find the vertex, we could put it into quadratic form. This has had an intensity change, a horizontal shift, and a vertical shift. Oh. But when we look at finding our zeros. Okay. Wait, is that, we're, we're trying to find the zeros. Now. We're trying to find the zero. We're trying to solve. So this would not be necessary here, but we could. We can look at everything that's happened okay. to it. I just want to hear yours. Well, how'd you get yours? What did you even plot? The very first thing that I saw was the. Uh, okay, it's, even, it's gone now. Did you get an answer that makes sense? It's the 3x squared. Plus 8x minus 9. Okay, well, what was your answer for x? 4.4. 4.4. So, yes. Yada, yada, yada. That's the answer. With oh. lots of decimals. Oh my god, I, I don't understand how ridiculous. <laughs> we spent 15 minutes doing something that took 5 seconds. I skipped I skipped yesterday, and I can do this in 5 seconds. It took 15 minutes. No, I know. Can't. Your calculator can do this so in 5 seconds. <laughs> So. We, should use this, we should use the stuff we have available to us. I know. I agree. Just keep me a brain. So, here's the point we're trying to get to. Oh, my God. 
Here's the point we're trying to get to. And this is where we're going to pick up tomorrow and Monday. Hey, we're out of time. I do not want you to be that late to Spanish. Here's the point we're trying to get to. Shut up. Because we have the technology available to us, and people have taken great time and effort to make it all work, we have to be very particular to use that technology in the correct manner so that we can avoid all of this. So, moving forward, moving forward, we'll pretty much do this stuff in calculators. I just want you to understand all the crazy nonsense that goes into it. What? Oh, yeah, I have a giant stack. I didn't know how to do it. Calculator? That explosion yesterday. Well, not yesterday. Traveler. No, I'm just joking. I no longer want to be in any math class. Walker. Thank you. Strickland. I guess I can pause this now.